Well, hello and welcome. I'm Greg Ogrens. I'm a general internist at the White River Junction VA in Vermont and the Senior Associate Dean for Medical Education at the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth. On behalf of my co-PI Louise Davies and the rest of the Squire team, I welcome you to this screencast uh, explaining the standards for quality improvement reporting excellence, the Squire 2.0 publication guidelines. This is work that was generously supported by the Health Foundation and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. In this screencast, what I'm going to do is explain to you um, how we got from Squire 1.0 to Squire 2.0. So this is really going to take you on the journey, and then we'll also tell you what's new, what's specific, and how Squire 2.0 can help you with your planning and your writing about your improvement work. These are the three stages of development of Squire 2.0, and you can see we started with an evaluation of the initial Squire guidelines. Um, these were published in 2008, and we refer to these as Squire 1.0. What we did in this is, through semi-structured interviews with 29 end users, we assessed the usability and clarity of Squire 1.0. So before we embarked on revising the guidelines, before we started rewriting the items, we really wanted to know the experience of those who had used the uh, guidelines. Um, this was work led by um, Louise Davies, and the details of this work can be found in this article in BMJ Quality and Safety. We then embarked on early revision, so step two here. We had an international advisory group of 18 experts. These were individuals who are editors and researchers and improvers. And these individuals, plus additional invitees, were also came together at two consensus conferences. This happened in November of 2013 and 2014. Through this process, we rewrote the guidelines. We got feedback. We um, discussed about the future of academic and scholarly QI work and really wanted the guidelines, the new guidelines, to meet and to match where the field of quality improvement was headed. This led to our third phase, which was pilot testing with some late revisions. We enlisted 44 authors who use an interim draft to write sections of a manuscript. They then submitted these sections to us. We analyzed them. We pro they provide, they, authors also provided feedback on the utility and the understanding of these draft guidelines. Additionally, we had semi-structured interviews with 11 journal authors and shared with them a draft version of the guidelines. What works? What doesn't work? What would you like to see more of when you um, receive articles that focus on qual quality improvement work? And finally, a penultimate draft was sent to over 450 individuals around the world. It was posted on the Squire website for public comment. And then all of the feedback from these three, section, these three items here were used to create Squire 2.0. Also important, this phase here with the 44 authors, um, again, Louise Davies led an evaluation of this process, and this is also available online from BMJ Quality and Safety, where you can get details about what was done, what we found, and how the uh, results of that, uh, that uh, process were used to inform the development of our Squire 2.0. So what are the major changes to Squire 2.0? There are four major changes. And I'm going to list them here, and then we're going to dig into each of these a little bit more. The first is terminology. Um, we found through our analysis that the terminology of the initial 1.0 um, wasn't as clear as it could be. So that was one of our goals. The second is theory, the use of theory in, in improvement work. Happens some of the time. And Squire 2.0 encourages it to be used more. Next, context. Context was sort of weaved throughout much of Squire 1.0. and Squire 2.0, it's elevated, has its own section, and it is weaved throughout the guidelines. Uh, we know that context is such an important component of improvement work, and it uh, is front and center and prominent in Squire 2.0. Lastly is the section of studying the intervention or interventions. Um, this is one of the most challenging aspects. I'll say a word about this in the next couple of slides. 
But first, a word about terminology. This is just a picture of uh, the method section from Squire 1.0, and you can get a sense of the uh, volume of words, the details with which uh, Squire 1.0 was uh, really uh, exquisitely detailed, but this was sometimes challenging for individuals. If we look an example of what the, or, or we look at what the methods look like for Squire 2.0, um, you see uh, fewer words. Um, we were very, very careful about how each item was structured and written, and we were very um, uh, uh, disciplined about the words that we use. For example, we don't use the word improvement because improvement um, uh, gives the connotation of something getting better. We talk about interventions. We talk about studying the intervention. Um, and what we, what we want to encourage is more reports, potentially reports of negative studies, so we can begin to learn from those negative studies and share that learning with others. Next is the uh, idea of theory, and this is uh, a screenshot of the uh, background, of the introductions part from the uh, Squire 1.0. And what you see in the Squire 2.0 is the addition of this component says rationale. Now, we didn't use the word theory because uh, theory as a uh, item, uh, as an item label over here, felt too difficult. It felt um, too uh, ethereal. So we use rationale a little bit easier to get your mind around. And as you see, it could, could be formal networks, models, concepts, or theories that help to explain the problem or reasons or assumptions that were used to develop the interventions and why the intervention was expected to work. Um, the Squire group felt very strongly about pushing the field to be clear about why was it assumed that this intervention or these series of interventions would be effective in this setting. And rationale is intended to help share that and help describe that in your writing. Now that leads into this uh, next component. First is the idea of context. So as you see here, context now has its own uh, item in Squire 2.0. Um, that was not the case in Squire 1.0. It first shows up here in methods about what are the elements considered important at the outset of introducing the intervention. Comes back in the discussion section about um, how did the context change? How did the context influence what you found? Um, really making context much more prominent uh, in two, Squire 2.0. The last um, major upgrade and major change is the study of the intervention. Um, this is really perhaps the hardest component of Squire. And, um, but um, the writing of improvement work really has two components. There is the doing of improvement, where there's a lot of work making something better. And then there's the external studying of what was happening. And Squire is intended for those places where both of these are happening. So what approach was chosen for assessing the impact of the interventions? What approach was used to establish whether the observed outcomes were due to the interventions or due to something else? So this pushes the uh, writers, the authors, the, the teams of individuals working to really clarify both what was done for the improvement and how was that process studied. As we said, we recognize this is a, a challenging uh, effort uh, for all of us, but we feel this is a way to improve the quality of uh, work that is reported in the literature. So just in summary, um, Squire 2.0 was developed through a very detailed analysis of Squire 1.0, um, input from experts, and thorough pilot testing. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, no other set of uh, publication guidelines have been uh, re reviewed and revised in this manner. This second bullet is actually very important. Squire 2.0 is intended to be applicable to the many methods and philosophical approaches that are used to improve the quality, safety, and value of healthcare services. This is not intended just for implementation research or PDSA cycles or if you use lean. It's really intended to encompass all of those and be, um, and be general enough 
that whatever methods you use, you can find a way to write about them and be complete and concise and comprehensive with the Squire guidelines. Um, the guidelines live on the Squire website, Squire statement, uh, squire-statement.org. Here you can find um, all kind of different resources, as well as the explanation elaboration document, which provides examples with a commentary on how that example meets or does not meet the Squire 2.0 item. So thank you for your interest in Squire 2.0. We hope that they will be helpful to you, and please feel free to uh, drop us a note on the website if you have questions or comments or if you'd like to connect with anyone on the Squire team.